hear a show like this anywhere else. And that's probably for the best. The worst of the riot. Radio U. Isaiah, do you know what a Steam Deck is? I don't think so. If you had to guess, Steam Deck. I assume it's some sort of steam that comes out maybe below your deck. Like uh, like some kind of therapy is what I picture, like some kind of aroma therapy mm, or something that like that. Nice. But yeah, like a diffuser. Uh, a Steam Deck is actually a handheld gaming console. Well, clearly they're not doing very good with advertising. Not to us, but we are uh, not doing well with gaming. Uh, and the Steam Deck... $500? I've never even heard of it. Are you joking? <laughs> Well, it's got a new... They've Is got it brand spanking new? There's a new one, a new version, the I Valve. believe. The Valve Steam Deck the Valve, I'm seeing here. Valve is the company. The 512 gigabyte handheld console, $584 on Amazon. It's got an OLED screen. It so also, does everything nowadays. <laughs> it's also putting off some fumes. So it is kind of aroma. Th- a, it's a aroma Steam therapy. Deck. It is kind of steaming. Of course it is. In some sense. The it whole has, point. Uh, like a, a gaming console you might be more familiar with, say an Xbox, this gaming console, the Valve Steam Deck, it has exhaust vents because it puts off enough heat that it needs that kind of thing. And Valve, the company that's responsible for the Steam Deck, has had to come out and say that they do not recommend you huffing the fumes that come out of the exhaust of your Steam Deck because people have been doing that. People have been asking and they've been saying, we don't endorse this. When does anyone ever endorse huffing? When have they ever been like, yes, huff. Please, huff more. If huff is the verb that's being used, that probably means you shouldn't be verbing that verb. Shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. Should not be huffing. Huffing is generally frowned upon. Uh, Now, they say there's been no safety concerns, adverse incidents that have come from this as of yet. But because people have been asking, because I guess at first it turned into a little bit of a joke on Reddit and stuff of that nature, uh, Valve has just wanted to clarify. And when people have been asking them directly, they say that it is generally not recommended that uh, you take a long, hard sniff of any fumes coming out of your Valve Steam Deck. Even though people say it smells real good. It's yeah, not- I would always lean, lean nay on the huffing. Carl no. says we're a disappointment to gamers everywhere for not knowing what a Steam Deck was. Well, we're was. not gamers. Yes, we did, a, we did a whole podcast episode about video games recently. But if you listen to that, you would know we aren't gamers. February of 2022, the original Steam Deck was launched. It's pretty new. Yeah, it's come on. You expect this to be up on everything? He's like, that was two years ago. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I'm sure there's lots of... I haven't seen a commercial, all right? Sure, there's lots of radio equipment. Have you seen a commercial? sports stuff. I need a commercial. People don't know about that. I need a commercial for it. If they had a commercial, I'd know. Yeah, I definitely... No, I haven't seen a commercial. It also Uh, hasn't been recommended to be on Amazon yet. (laughs) Well, you don't have enough money for it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, quick question. What is the best smell that you're not supposed to smell? Mm, that's a good question. Maybe um, right off the rip, you go to the gas station pumping yeah, gas. I was thinking gas or the other obvious one, Sharpies. I've never, I've never sniffed them. You don't sniff Sharpies? No. There's a couple of them over there. See, at the gas station, I come by innocently because I'm just standing there. Uh-huh. You never write with a Sharpie in your life. I've written with a Sharpie, but it doesn't give off that. It's not like that. Oh, it smells good. I think that's the answer. No. Uh, text in your answer. The best smelling thing you're not supposed to smell, 8772-RADIO-U. The only thing Isaiah loves more than the riot is himself. Someone who probably still lives with his mother and hates himself. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. Patrick Mahomes went on some lengthy tirades on the field, off the field, complaining about it. But in the last couple of days, he has... Wheeled back around and profusely apologized. Uh, he even said yesterday 
in response to a question. He said, it's not necessarily pressure from the franchise. There's just pressure to be from being a good person to apologize and to not behave the way he did on Sunday after the game. What do you make of it, Isaiah? I personally don't love it. You don't like him apologizing? I'm not. I mean, I just, I, I don't accept his apology. Why not? I feel as if he was in the wrong. Yeah. Of and you should apologize. That's when you apologize. But it's going yeah. to take, take some some work here, a little oh, bit of work. Oh, yeah. You can't just say, I'm, I'm a good person and just, you're just a good person. So, yeah, show, yeah, show me. He's got, in other words, what you're saying is the referee should intentionally screw up this Sunday. And uh, see, see how he behaves then. Yes. Yeah. Let's see. You got. I mean, see you, if he's really. You lost a, a little bit. Yeah. On me there. You got to earn it back. I can't just give it all to you back at once. You were bad, and when you're bad, things get taken away. And so, unfortunately, there you're gonna have to earn it back. Maybe by at the at the end of the season. Maybe if you lose in a playoff game, mm-hmm. and you go out there and you shake hands and and you don't yell at everybody and have to be held back, then we can start to you know work our way back to be. Me being more for you, but right now you kind of seem like a villain. In Isaiah's eyes, Patrick Mahomes now a villain, maybe in many's eyes. I like that he apologized. Granted, in some sense, this is an easy thing to apologize for because he was clearly wrong. Um, and it's not a life and death thing, you know, like sometimes I don't know. It, it just feels like, yeah, you should be able to apologize for this, but I like him saying it, and I especially like the tactic that he's taking where he's saying he just wants to be a good person. He also went on to say he tries to act in a way that he's a good role model. I would say generally, prior to Sunday, he does a decent job of that. And I would say there's a lot of ways to look at it because you think about like other famous sports stars. Charles Barkley famously said, I'm not a role model. I admire in a way that take too of uh, setting expectations for how you're going to behave or how people should look up to you. But for Patrick Mahomes, he's saying he wants people to be able to look up to him, to, for him to be a positive influence. But the truth is, even with him having that mindset, he still screwed up. And that's a reminder for all of us that, one, no matter how good we want to be, we're going to screw up. And that the people that we look up to, no matter how good they want to be, whether they're good role models or not, whether they're trying to be or not, they're going to screw up, too. Uh, But here's what's great is that Jesus is not going to screw up. You can always look up to him. He will always be a perfect example of what you need to be in your life. But again, understanding that we're all going to fall short. Patrick Mahomes falls short, fell short. I just fell short right there. We're all going to make mistakes, but Jesus is not going to hold you. uh, Going to, he's not going to be like Isaiah. (laughs) <laughs> and have you make you have to earn it back. Jesus loves you the in the moment that you're messing up. Jesus loves you as much then as if you haven't messed up in 100 years. He wants to be a part of your life. He wants to show that love to you. And all you need to do is ask for it. Say, hey, God, I'm ready for that. If you want to find out more, start at RadioU.com slash free gift. We're not sure who behaves worse. The riot or their dogs. I don't even know how to behave like a real human being. The riot. Radio U. The town of Meriden, Idaho. It is the very first ever In N Out Burger in the state of Idaho. They're expanding. You know, I didn't really know where Idaho was until I just I took a gander at a US map. Oh yeah. I'd kind of forgotten about Idaho for a while. It's not a very it's not in the news very often. But this is a big time for Idaho because now they finally have joined the ranks of states with In N Out Burgers. And uh, you know, In N Out's popular. You have to wait a pretty long time, I think, at most In-N-Outs, even on a regular day at a location that's been wherever it has been for years. Forget about how long you would have had to wait if you wanted to go to In-N-Out Burger, the very first In-N-Out Burger in Idaho, how long you'd have to wait to get food there on opening day. Long time? They were telling people eight hours. An entire workday's worth of, di- of time. Eight hours? Eight hours. Think about how hungry you would be Yeah. in eight hours. It's not good if you have to eat a meal in line to eat a meal. Like you get there at noon at uh-huh. lunch, and you're waiting until dinner to eat. At this time of year, you could just about get there at sunrise 
and then by sunset, you still wouldn't have food. That's wild. But that's how dedicated people were to going to this brand new In-N-Out Burger in Meriden, Idaho. It sounds like the entire state showed up. Well, it's the first day. You know, it's the first day. Yeah, but it's not going anywhere. But, but, but at the same time, the excitement level, you know, I'm sure they were doing some sort of deal. The first 100 customers get this. They, they do that a lot, those openings. They don't have to do that. Yeah, but I'm saying that maybe they could have done that. <laughs> yeah. uh, Either way, I mean, if they weren't busy on the first day, that would be, if there wasn't an eight-hour long line, yeah. then you probably should just shut it down right there. I guess it'd be a concern. If you can't drum up a little bit of excitement on the day that it opens. The first in and out burger in the entire state, and it's a big state. So I'm going to give you some numbers here, right? Yeah. In and out, obviously, very popular. Everybody knows what In and Out is. There are thirteen thousand five hundred McDonald's. Uh huh. But McDonald's wide, you know, they're everywhere. Let's do something a little bit more, not as not as well known. Maybe okay. Culver's. Yep. There's more one regional. one thousand Culver's in the U.S. of A. And then we get to In and Out. Just three hundred and ninety. In and outs in the whole There's US. There's 390. 390. Does that feel like a lot or, or a little? That's shockingly more than you than were expecting. I thought it would be. Yeah. I thought there was like 12. Oh, no. That would be crazy. Yeah. No wonder the line would be eight hours long. Yeah. But there's, yeah, there's 397. The majority of which, obviously, in California, 69% of all in and outs in California. There's a lot of room for growth. There's some in, there's a handful in Texas. Really? Yeah, Didn't there's a handful that. in Did Texas, a handful in Colorado, Nevada, mainly Las Vegas. Yeah. But nowhere on nowhere east of Texas is there in and out. Have you been to In and Out? I've been in I've been to In and Out a couple wor- times. Worth the wait. It's okay. I've it's not like mind blowing, but it's I mean it tastes good. I've it's not never- worth an eight hour wait. I've never, I've still never gone. Maybe in Idaho, uh, you know, they're u- everything's so far away. It's a big state. Maybe they're just used to waiting that long. That's not even unusual. They drove two hours to get there. It, yeah. Maybe from the time you shoot a deer there to the time you can actually eat it after you've cured it, whatever. Like, this is not, eight hours is nothing. I think our Idaho listeners are like, where do you guys think we live? <laughs> I couldn't tell you a thing about Idaho. Not one thing. At Boise is there, right? Yeah. That's what Ro- I've got. Rocky Mountains, I think. It's very, I picture it very rural. Disinformation. Mispronunciations. Bad impressions. That's Hudson. This is The Riot on Radio U. It's time for Choice Champions, our Thursday tradition. Isaiah and I have a topic. We draft teams of three, snake draft style, based off of that topic. You tell us. Which team is better and which picks we missed? Today's theme things about Christmas. We're talking Christmas season, not just Christmas Day, right? Yeah, just across the board. It's just Christmas. Okay. And you have the first pick. This is tough at number one here. A lot of pressure. But I think I have to go. With presents. Ooh. I'm taking presents at one. How do you not take presents? Some will call you selfish. Well, this is the act of giving. This is the act of receiving. Oh, so they're bo- both rolled into one. I'm just taking presents. The joy in the eyes of your loved ones when they open the gift that you gave them. Precisely. Is what you're taking at number one. The whole, I mean, think about what you've been doing the whole past month. You've been doing presents in your mind. On Amazon, my parents' wonderful toy store, wherever you get your presents. Well, you're talking about what I've been doing the last month. I'll tell you, that tells me where I'm going with pick number two. I'm taking Christmas movies. Everybody's watching Christmas movies this time of year. There's a movie for everybody, and you know it just brings back all the feels from growing up or whatever. Like, it just, whether you're into Hallmark movies or Krampus or Home Alone, or whatever it is, there's just, uh, everyone's got their Christmas movie, and probably a whole long list of them that you have to make sure you watch every year. So I think that's that's huge. That's a big, a universal Christmas positive 
My other, my next choice, snake draft style. It's tough. I'll take time off. That's a good one. Vacation time. Yeah. Getting those extra days, especially like you get the school break. Uh, you get some holiday time from work. And if you don't, you're using up your vacation time at the end of the year. So I'm going with that. Those two. Those are good. So I take presents at number one. And you might call me selfish for that, but this is where this is where I bring it into a whole pie here. Yeah. Of choice champions. I'm gonna take family. Oh. Family time you with so my would. next pick. A little special time with your family, whether it's Christmas Day, the holiday season, getting that extra family time. Always a lot of fun. And then I'll follow it up with my third pick. I'll wrap that up with Christmas Eve. Because sometimes the night before the buildup, even as a child, yep. it's almost even better. You all think right. about all the traditions. A lot of people have Christmas Eve traditions. Maybe uh-huh. you're opening one gift. Maybe you have your pajamas you put on. Yep. Whatever you do. A lot of people have a traditional movie that they watch. Precisely. People, the church services, the candle lighting mm-hmm. can be really nice. The midnight, yeah, the midnight, midnight service. Midnight mass, yeah. Yeah. There's lots of great stuff on Christmas Eve. So, and the, just the build up alone, when you go to bed, knowing that Santa is coming that night, yeah. your house will probably be broken into sometime between midnight and 5 a.m. and someone will drop off gifts. It's very exciting. I will admit, I think a good case can be made that Christmas Eve is better than Christmas Day. It's pretty good. I mean, it's, it's right there. The, sometimes the anticipation is just better. Yeah. The build up, knowing the gifts you're going to give tomorrow, it's exciting. And I always find as a grown up that after Christmas morning, the rest of Christmas Day doesn't always hold up as well. I agree with that as well. Uh, okay, my last pick then. I will go with, I'm going to go with the lights. I Ooh. love the entire, uh, decorating, although it's frustrating, can be fun, but even more so for an entire month of the year, everything just looks cooler than it does the other 11 months of the year. That's true. So uh, to wrap up our Christmas things choice champions draft isaiah you have presents family time and christmas eve and i have gone with christmas movies vacation time off and christmas lights who has the better team and what did we miss 8772 radio u Disinformation, mispronunciations, bad impressions. That's Hudson. This is The Riot on Radio U. In the midst of use, uh, not useless knowledge, choice champions today taking our favorite Christmas things. Isaiah, you had the first pick. You went with presents. Followed that up with family and wrapped it all in a big bow with Christmas Eve. And I went with Christmas movies. Christmas, a vacation time off, and Christmas lights. Votes are rolling in. Susanna, voting for you. For your childlike wonder. That's the truth, huh? Yeah. That is the truth. Time and time again, very childlike. Brian did not vote for one of us, but he did vote for something we missed, and that is food. You know, like grandma's cooking. That was one of my honorable mentions that I had on deck. If you didn't let me get my, my top choices. Yeah. I thought about that too. I just always think, I just, I feel like in my family, we didn't have as much a tradition of like Mm. Christmas is this big meal. I mean, we would eat, but it's not like, not the same as Thanksgiving. See, mine isn't so much the meal, but it's like the sweets, the desserts. There's certain things like the Christmas, like cookie platters. You think, I think more about the Christmas cookies. And then my family does like ham usually yeah, on Christmas. Yeah, ham. A Christmas ham is good. Yep. And then we always we always do something special. So it's always it's always good food. Thomas voted for me. He says all three of my choices are probably his favorites as well. But where is the Chris- Christmas music love from Thomas? I thought about music as well. I did too. But didn't quite cut the top three. I think it music is divisive to say the least. Uh, because like here on Radio U even, we have some great Christmas songs. We don't play them all the time. People just get tired of it. Some people really embrace the Sinatra, Bing Crosby, 
uh, Michael Bublé, Mar- Mariah Carey, Time of Year. Yep. Where you just hear it everywhere. Others, others not as much. So I felt like it wasn't. I love a lot of Christmas music, but it's specific. It's not just like the music of the season. Uh, what else was honorable mention for you? I obviously, had food and music were two of the picks that were right there. Yeah. I also considered just snow. Really? Just snow. Well, that would alienate a big portion of the country. See, but I'm doing snow on, like, Christmas Day. I mean, that is exciting. Like, you look out the window. Yeah. You see the snow outside. You look at the tree. Christmas tree could have easily been one. Or even just decorating. Yeah, I thought I thought that kind of lumped it. I mean, I wasn't claiming it, but I did kind of lump it in with the lights. Oh, the lights. You thought Christmas tree and lights were all in one. Well, I could have said decoration. Yeah, I think de- I think decorating could have been one because people really like decorating. Yeah. Money bags. He, he takes decorating here at Radio U he to does. another level. He does. Uh, Max says he does a prime rib roast on Christmas, mm. so you got to go with that. That sounds great. Sounds real good. Any honorable mentions for you? I The other ones I considered that haven't been mentioned yet, Christmas cookies, eating them and making them fun. And uh, also, this I would never have made, picked this in my top three, but it was something I considered, and that is eggnog. I like eggnog. Tallying up the votes here, it appears that I have won. And a controversial... Decision. All right, Patrick Mahomes. Disinformation. Mispronunciations. Bad impressions. That's Hudson. This is The Riot on Radio U. You know, this is a busy time at the holidays mm-hmm. for many to uh, to not just, you know, experience family get-togethers, but to meet, perhaps for the first time, your partner's family as well. That's right. You could be. Which is why I have a list of tips here in case in the next couple weeks is your first time getting to know the in-laws. Or I guess they wouldn't be probably likely your in-laws yet. Uh, But perhaps future in-laws. Isaiah, let me run through these. See what you think of them. Uh, Tip number one. Don't come empty-handed. You need to bring something. Bring some sort of food. You could bring... A snack. Some kind of uh, flowers. A dish? Uh, no, you're not bringing flowers. You can bring flowers, That's yeah. wild. Who are you bringing flowers for? Uh, Mom. That's no. very. That's a nice gesture. Don't do that. Flowers. You could bring uh, homemade baked goods of some kind. I think maybe. For dessert. I think a dessert is fine. I think flowers is nice. I think flowers would be a little awkward. Hi there. Here you are. It's very like, I don't know, it's very. Uh, Traditional? Yeah, it's kind of. It's almost too, yeah, too who's much. Gonna, who, what kind of family is going to be mad if you bring them flowers? They're going to be mad. They might just think like, this guy, ooh. Too much? He's really going for it here, isn't he? And then you shake the dad's hand real stern. You yeah. hold it. And you never release first. No, of course that. not. Uh, that's another tip is read body language upon first meeting to figure out if, they're, if they want hugs or handshakes. Just go in for a hug with dad. Just, just become very quick with them. A you think hug. so? That's your advice? No, I think you should not hug. Do that. you extend the hand and then, uh, because either way you get the handshake, but then you can like do the the handshake hug? Oh no, you're not going. <laughs> whoa, whoa, buddy! All right, Buster, you keep your hands to yourself. You just <laughs> you can shake my hand. You better not be touching my back. Uh, this is an important one. Learn names. Mm, smart. It's suggested here that you ask your partner to. Give you like flat to like on their phone or something flashcards of the family members because that shows that you, you know, that you're paying attention. The important part is it's not always that you know the names, uh huh, but the important part is you don't say a name that's not theirs. You don't want to miss misidentify. You'd anybody. rather go with like friend or pal before you say the wrong name. All right. Here's a good, I think this is a great tip because it can be hard. When you're meeting your uh, significant other's family for the first time, what do you talk about? It says here, ask about your partner's childhood. A common little, you know, what was she like growing up? Uh, Maybe be more specific, less uh, interrogative, to sound less like you're interrogating people. But, uh, you know, how was she in school? Did she play any sport? I don't know, like ask questions about... Growing up, you probably need to think about it a little more than I just did. 
Maybe like fun. They like comical stories. Yeah, right. But embarrassing moments. Another uh, another tip here, though, is don't joke at your partner's expense. I cannot endorse that. Neither can I. That's a bad tip. I if, think that's hilarious. If you, as long as, like, I mean, obviously be careful. You don't want to insult your partner. But if you can have fun and, you know, again, they're the common connector here. So if you can make good jokes about them, uh, you know, with everybody, laugh, including them, as long as they can laugh along with you, uh, that's going to be a great way to build a bond with this new family. You're that, was, that was my first move. That was the very first thing I yeah. said was a joke about her. Yeah. I pulled up as we know my car crunched from the radio U parking lot. Yeah. I've got a big dent in the front. I get out of the car. He goes, oh, rough driving here on the way, pointing at my truck being dented. Yeah. I said, well, I've been letting your daughter drive. <laughs> he thought that was hilarious. Immediately off on the right foot. That's good. Uh, a couple more here. Offer to clean up. That's just kind. That just shows you have good manners. They'll probably tell you no, but maybe. Uh don't sit on the sidelines if they're like, if you, you know, a lot of people do board games, card games, stuff like that. Don't sit those out. Even if you hate them, have a good attitude about it. You got to participate. Yeah, you got to participate. Get in there. And listen as much as you talk. Don't try to be the center of attention, even though they'll, they'll probably make you the center of attention. They're probably going to ask you a lot of stuff. Just make sure you are there to learn as well. Pretty good. I think there's a pretty good list of tips. One of the better lists that we've had as of late. Usually it's just bad. Disinformation. Mispronunciations. Bad impressions. That's Hudson. This is The Riot on Radio U. Confidently say I've never seen this out and about before, but supposedly it's taking the world by storm, starting with TikTok. It's the jellyfish cut. Have you seen this? I have not seen it. My first time seeing it. The jellyfish cut is if you picture what a jellyfish looks like, it is getting your hair cut that way. They describe it as a cheekbone brushing bob, but then you leave layers underneath long and tentacle-like, so, you know, they drape over your shoulders. So you've got kind of like the bulb, the bubble, that's the top of a jellyfish, at the you know, that would be around yeah. your cheeks. And then you've got the back of your hair that would flow down. So kind of mullet-esque in a way. It's like a, you have, it's almost, it's almost like you just have a little, a little bit of flair at the bottom. Yeah. A lot of flavor up top, just uh-huh. a little taste at the bottom. So they're saying, they're calling it here gender neutral. I find it hard to picture. I don't see a video here of any guys with it. But it definitely feels like more of a gal thing to me. Um, these, these. Pictures are really wild. Yeah, do you like it? Do you, what do you think of it? It's, I think it's really cool. I wouldn't want my girlfriend to have it, but I think that it's cool for the, someone that I am not dating. <laughs> <laughs> like, if your wife got it, it would be. I think that'd be hilarious. Yeah, I don't think, you know, uh, what I'm seeing here, and it makes sense too, right? When you think of jellyfish, real colorful. So people, uh, this is like if you have lighter hair, and then you color it all bright colored too, kind of like... uh I don't know, phosphorescent or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but it's just wildly colored, too. You pair that together. Real eye-catching. It is cool. It does. Can I say this? It's kind of like, it looks kind of like elf-like. You oh. know? Like, it looks like something that you could have in modern day, but it also kind of looks like something that, uh, if you're watching Lord of the Rings, some of the elves might have this hairstyle. Or, or playing I Final agree. Fantasy. That's a good... Which is why it's not my, my style. That's a great take. That's a really good take. But yeah, if you want to do some like next level role playing, some cosplay, you do this. Frog has a good take too. He said it sounds like a bowl cut that isn't quite complete. Yeah. And that's also true. That's what true. it is. If they actually described it as that though, it sounds a lot less appealing. It's yeah. Not, it doesn't... It's not a... Uh, it doesn't look ridiculous. Well, if you style it correctly, I think from the front, depending on how you style it, it looks okay. From the back. Yeah. Or the side. It looks a little wilder. It almost looks as if you have the bowl cut, right? Up top. Yeah. And then you just took the long hair and you just push it behind your ears. Uh-huh. And then it's just kind of there, you know? But I don't think that this would be a cut that maybe, I think in photos, you could make this look good. 
like these girls that have taken these pictures. Yeah. It looks like, oh, that's kind of stylish, you know, if you do it the right way. But if I saw you in the 360 real life and I'm getting a whole walk around of you, <laughs> yeah. these angles aren't doing you any favors. Yeah, it's uh, it does kind of look in a sense like it's a it's a bowl cut and somebody just got lazy and kind of forgot or something like you gave yourself who a came bowl up cut. With this, you know, yeah. like who, who started this? Who started probably these probably somebody who got a bowl cut and it, they this it was a messed up haircut and they made the most of it. And now it's a trend. It's what it has to be. Well, I hope that have you maybe you sent this to your wife. I want her to get it. Do you think this is up her alley? Uh, I don't think so. Darn it. I want but someone I, I know to get it. I wouldn't rule it out completely. If she her. said that she was going to get this, would you be okay with it? I'd be fine with it. Yes. But. You, Angela, you know what to do. <laughs> yeah. Put me to the test. We're not sure who behaves worse. The riot or their dogs. I don't even know how to behave like a real human being. The riot. Radio you. Confidently say I've never seen this out and about before, but supposedly it's taking the world by storm, starting with TikTok. It's the jellyfish cut. Have you seen this? I have not seen it. My first time the, seeing it. The jellyfish cut is, if you picture what a jellyfish looks like, it is getting your hair cut that way. They describe it as a cheekbone brushing bob. But then you leave layers underneath long and tentacle-like so, you know, they drape over your shoulders. So you've got kind of like the bulb, the bubble that's the top of a jellyfish at the, you know, that would be around your cheeks. And then you've got the back of your hair that would flow down. So kind of mullet-esque in a way. It's like a, you have, it's almost, it's almost like you just have little, a little bit of flair at the bottom. Yeah. A lot of flavor up top, just uh-huh. a little taste at the bottom. So they're saying they're calling it here gender neutral. I find it hard to picture. I don't see a video here of any guys with it, but it definitely feels like more of a gal thing to me. Um, these these pictures are really wild. Yeah. Do you like it? Do you? What do you think of it? It's, I think it's really cool. I wouldn't want my girlfriend to have it, but I think that it's cool for <laughs> someone that I am not dating. <laughs> <laughs> Like, if your wife got it, it would be, I think that'd be hilarious. Yeah. I don't think, you know, uh, what I'm seeing here, and it makes sense too, right? When you think of jellyfish, real colorful. So people, uh, this is like, if you have lighter hair and then you color it all bright colored too, kind of like, I don't know, phosphorescent or something like that. I don't know. Uh, But it's just wildly colored too. You pair that together. Real eye catching. It is cool. It does. Can I say this? It's kind of like. It looks kind of like elf-like, you oh. know, like it looks like something that you could have in modern day, but it also kind of looks like something that uh, if you're watching Lord of the Rings, some of the elves might have this hairstyle or, or playing I Final agree. Fantasy. That's a good. Which is why it's not my, my style. That's a great take. That's a really good take. But yeah, if you want to do some like next level role playing, some cosplay, you do this. Frog has a good take too. He said it sounds like a bowl cut that isn't quite complete. Yeah. And that's also that's what true. It is. If they actually described it as that though, it sounds a lot less appealing. It's yeah. not it doesn't it's not uh it doesn't look ridiculous. Well, if you style it correctly, I think from the front, depending on how you style it, it looks okay. From the back. Yeah. Or the side. It looks a little wilder. It almost looks as if you have the bowl cut, right? Up top. Yeah. And then you just took the long hair and you just push it behind your ears. Uh Uh-huh. And then it's just kind of there, you know? But I don't think that this would be a cut that maybe, I think in photos, you could make this look good. Like these girls that have taken these pictures. Yeah. It looks like, oh, that's kind of stylish, you know? If you do it the right way. But if I saw you in the 360 real life and I'm getting a whole walk around (laughs) of you, these angles aren't doing you any favors. Yeah, it's uh, it does kind of look in a sense like it's a it's a bowl cut and somebody just got lazy and kind of forgot or something. Like you gave yourself who a came bowl up cut. with this, you know? Yeah. Like who who started this? Who started probably, these things? Probably probably somebody who got a bowl cut and it, they this it was a messed up haircut and they made the most of it and now it's a trend. It's what it has to be. Well, I hope that have you maybe you sent this to your wife. I wanted to get it. 
Do you think this is up her alley? Uh, I don't think so. Darn it. I want but someone I, I know to get it. I wouldn't rule it out completely. If she her. said that she was going to get this, would you be okay with it? I'd be fine with it. Yes. But. You, Angela, you know what to do. <laughs> yeah. Put me to the test. We're not sure who behaves worse. The riot or their dogs. I don't even know how to behave like a real human being. The riot. Radio U. A big new study at Montclair State University in New Jersey has found that people growing up now think the world is more dangerous than every previous generation in modern history. We are more scared, the people growing up right now, more scared of the world than any other generation has been. In, uh, again, modern history. So, what, we're talking at least 100 years, you would say? I'd say so. Uh, so, what they, you know, they basically asked a bunch of people that would be considered Gen Zers, uh, all the, how much they're concerned about certain risks with life right now. And what they found was the, the nervousness, the anxiety about these risks is much higher for Gen Z than it was at the same time period for previous generations. Like you go back to uh, millennials when they were growing up, not as, not as afraid. Baby boomers, obviously, not as afraid. But here's the kicker. The world is actually, like a lot of these uh, risk factors they asked about, you're at less risk now than you would have been when you were growing up as a baby boomer or a millennial. So figure that one out. There's a lot to handle for some people. In other words, we're safer now, but we're more scared now. Because I look at like, I'm looking at numbers, right? Yeah. Because like one of the big things is like, the people are afraid of is like dying. Yeah, eh? of course. Being like murdered. Probably one of the top things I'm afraid of is not being alive. And the rates, like the murder rates, since like a long time have been going down. Yep. Kind of crazy. That's good news. It is. It's great news. Why maybe, are we not celebrating? Maybe people just aren't hearing that enough. People aren't. That's actually. People think probably if I asked people, if we did a, a survey yeah. of 100 people, a radio, you a riot survey. Across generations. Across generations. Do you think between, let's say, just 1990 to now, do you think there are more or less murders per year? Yeah. I feel like most people would say more. Probably. You have to think so, right? Yeah, and that it. But what's interesting, I think, is that's unique to our time now. Where in 1990, if you ask people, are there more or less murders than there were in the 60s or whatever, uh, they might not be as likely to say there's definitely more murders now. Even though actually, in that case, might have been true. Uh, so yeah, what they theorize here in this study is that since we're constantly bombarded. With like news headlines on our phone, we're seeing stuff on social media all the time. It's more likely that the stuff you're seeing is negative, which just reinforces the thoughts that there's so much negative going on that you are more unsafe because there's so much more risk in the world. They also say, though, that we tend to, they think that like us growing up now tend to see things more black and white, as in either something's dangerous or it's safe. Where the truth is, like, if you're leaving your house, depending on where you're going, there's a whole wide range of where you're going. Is it safe? Is it unsafe? It's not just, yes, it's safe. Yes, it's dangerous. It's, well, it's 70%. You know, like, there's a range, that, but we're not very good at calculating that anymore or considering that. There's just, it's all yes or no answers. And the answer for everyone right now is they are in danger. Yeah. Constant danger. Constantly. But if you look back, if you want to know when you were really in danger... You were really in danger back in the 1980s. Yeah. When yet again, homicides, murders, twice as much as now. Yeah. Twice. Isn't that crazy? Well, well, twice. We, yeah. The, the between believe, the 70s but, and 80s, since 2001, the numbers have been just about a steady the same. All the way to 2023. It's been about the same. The lowest year was 2014. At its lowest, when you were in the least amount of danger. But even then, it was still very comparable to right now. It's crazy. But back in the 70s to, if you, 70s to 90s, 
danger. Think about this. If you just the way you view it um, could be a positive or negative uh, is that we consume so much true crime right now. It's a it's a popular thing, right? Uh, but if you focus especially on the serial killers, think about all the serial killer stories that you hear. There aren't any serial killers nowadays, are there? Not that I can, not, not with any, any crazy names. Yeah. Back in the day, there's the Stranglers and the, you know. The Zodiac. The, yeah. I don't even know. I'm, I'm going to start making some up. But they're, yeah, all the serial killers are from like the 80s. They're not from the 2020s. We're, we're, we got to be safe. But because you're constantly listening to stuff about being killed, it makes you think you might be more likely to be killed. That's why you listen to the riot and said, we'll That's straight. right. We're telling you the good news. You're safe. You're safe. The only thing Isaiah loves more than the riot is himself. Someone who probably still lives with his mother and hates himself. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. Big new study at Montclair State University in New Jersey has found the people growing up now think the world is more dangerous than every previous generation in modern history. We are more scared, the people growing up right now, more scared of the world than any other generation has been in, uh, again, modern history. So what, we're talking at least 100 years, you would say? I'd say so. Uh, so what they, you know, they basically asked a bunch of people that would be considered Gen Zers, uh, all the, how much they're concerned about certain risks with life right now. And what they found was the the nervousness, the anxiety about these risks is much higher for Gen Z than it was at the same time period for previous generations. Like you go back to uh, millennials when they were growing up, not as, not as afraid. Baby boomers, obviously, not as afraid. But here's the kicker. The world is actually, like a lot of these uh, risk factors they asked about, you're at less risk now than you would have been when you were growing up as a baby boomer or a millennial. So figure that one out. There's a lot to handle for some people. In other words, we're safer now, but we're more scared now. Because I look at like, I'm looking at numbers, right? Yeah. Because like one of the big things is like the people are afraid of is like dying. Yeah, okay? of course. Being like murdered. Probably one attacked. of the top things I'm afraid of is not being alive. And the rates, like the murder rates, since like a long time have been going down. Yep. Kind of crazy. That's good news. It is. It's great news. Why maybe, are we not celebrating? Maybe people just aren't hearing that enough. People aren't. That's actually. People think probably if I asked people, if we did a, a survey yeah. of 100 people, a radio, you, a riot survey. Across generations. Across generations. Do you think between, let's say, just 1990. To now, do you think there are more or less murders per year? Yeah. I feel like most people would say more. Probably. You have to think so, right? Yeah. And that it, but what's interesting, I think, is that's unique to our time now, where in 1990, if you ask people, are there more or less murders than there were in the 60s or whatever, uh, they might not be as likely to say, there's definitely more murders now, even though actually, in that case, might have been true. Uh, so yeah, what they theorize here in this study is that since we're constantly bombarded with like news headlines on our phone, we're seeing stuff on social media all the time. It's more likely that the stuff you're seeing is negative, which just reinforces the thoughts that there's so much negative going on that you are more unsafe because there's so much more risk in the world. They also say though, that we tend to, they think that like us growing up now tend to see things more black and white as in either something's dangerous or it's safe where the truth is like if you're leaving your house depending on where you're going there's a whole wide range of where you're going is it safe is it unsafe it's not just yes it's safe yes it's dangerous it's well it's 70 percent. you know like there's a range that but we're not very good at calculating that anymore or considering that there's just it's all yes or no answers and the answer for everyone right now is they are in danger. Yeah. Constant danger. But Constantly. if you look back, if you want to know when you were really in danger, you were really in danger back in the 1980s. Yeah. When yet again, 
homicides, murders, twice as much as now. Yeah. Twice. Isn't that crazy? Well, but twice. We, yeah. The, believe, between the but, 70s and 80s, since 2001, the numbers have been just about a steady the same all the way to 2023. It's been about the same. The lowest year was 2014. At its lowest, when you were in the least amount of danger. But even then, it was still very comparable to right now. It's crazy. But back in the 70s to, if you, of 70s to 90s, danger. Think about this. If you just the way you view it um, could be a positive or negative. Uh, is that we consume so much true crime right now. It's a, it's a popular thing, right? Uh, but if you focus especially on the serial killers, think about all the serial killer stories that you hear. There aren't any serial killers nowadays, are there? Not that I can, not, not with any, any crazy names. Yeah, back in the day, there's the Stranglers and the, you know. The Zodiac. The, yeah, I don't even know. I'm, I'm going to start making some up. But they're, yeah, all the serial killers are from like the 80s. They're not from the 2020s. We're, we're, we gotta be safe. But because you're constantly listening to stuff about being killed, makes you think you might be more likely to be killed. That's why you listen to the riot and said, we'll That's right. Straight. We're telling you the good news. You're safe. You're safe. Go out there. The only thing Isaiah loves more than the riot is himself. Someone who probably still lives with his mother and hates himself. You're listening to the riot on Radio U. Have you ever done this, Isaiah? Pinched your nose, closed your mouth. When you're about to sneeze. I have not. I like sneezing. I think it feels good. I've always let them go. You just let them, let them go wild and free. I, I, I went through a phase where I never wanted to expel a sneeze. And so I did. I held my nose. You held in sneezes? I'm I look forward to sneezes. No, I used to do that. Also, I know my brother also. He might still do it for all I know. Haven't seen him in a while. Don't know what his sneeze a strategy is at this point, but I'll tell you, I'm glad that I, I stopped holding in my sneezes by pinching my nose. It turns out it can be very dangerous. According to a new report, this is the first ever recorded incidence of this. A man in the UK held his nose, closed his mouth when he felt a sneeze coming on. That led to him tearing open his windpipe. Well, that's not funny. He, it's dangerous. <laughs> he tore his trachea by holding in a sneeze. So just to be clear, this is not like mentally telling yourself, I'm not going to sneeze, and then talking yourself out of it, which I can do from time to time. That's safe. But sneezing, having your body go through the sneeze process, but then the air not coming out of your nose or your mouth, Dangerous enough in this case to rip open this man's windpipe. I love a good sneeze. Yeah. I would never hold it in. This is worst case scenario holding in a sneeze. Imagine being this guy when it happened. The pain. He was driving when he did it. Ugh. Which I understand. A a sneeze while driving is dangerous. Yes. I still let it go. You have to. Because it's a safe thing to do. How often, like realistically, how many times a week are you sneezing? Twice. I think I sneeze at least once a day. No, you don't. Yeah, because you, you do not. Doesn't this happen to you? You go outside in the sunshine and you sneeze. The yeah. sun makes you sneeze. That happens probably almost once a day, and then sometimes I sneeze like at my desk or whatever. I don't know. Maybe I've been sneezing more lately, but I feel like I I might get two sneezes a day. Have you ever had a sneezing fit? Uh, no. Mm. I think the most I've ever sneezed in a row was like four times. See, I, I love sneezing yet again, uh-huh. but it goes from really fun to really terrible. To too much. Oh, my gosh. I've had some where I've, I've had like seven in a row, and I can't stop. I can't do it. And that's, uh, that's scary. I once watched my brother go through it for like two minutes of nonstop sneezing, uh-huh. and I thought he was going to pass out. It, that, was, it was actually... That's a long time. It's, it was so How long. How rapid was the... Was he, the he would think it was, it was a sneeze, and then he would think it's over. Yep. And then sneeze. And then about four seconds, sneeze. Four seconds, sneeze. Do you sneeze into your sleeve? Yeah. Oh, well, so you, you cover actually, up. You know what? When or I'm do sitting, you freeze sneeze? When I'm sitting alone, then I just freeze sneeze, 
which some people would say is wrong because it's because it's the droplets, right? They're getting everywhere. You can't see them. But I mean, it's my own office. I'm all alone by myself. If I am around people, I will cover up for all the good that does. Usually for me, I I open sneeze. It feels better. It does. Especially if you're outside, a good open sneeze. I don't like to sneeze into my arm because then you're running the risk of, is my sleeve going to be covered in snot? Yeah. I was going to point out that I feel that when I was a child, I'd sneeze and then you'd have the snot drip, you know, mm-hmm. disgusting. I don't think that happens as an adult. My sneezes aren't productive as a grown up. They're dry. I'm also, a, I'm a loud sneezer, uh-huh. which runs in my family, believe it or not. My mother, very loud sneezer. I once, as a child, wow. this, this is a good story. Uh-huh. I once, as a child, was riding with my mom in the car, and she was driving, had her window rolled down. She sneezed. Kid next to her, riding bike, fell off bike. <laughs> True story. <laughs> loud sneezer. Hey, loud sneezing, that's good. It commands respect. It, I uh, like a good sneeze. Add a little riot to your Instagram feed. Follow. At Radio U Official. The Riot. Radio U. Did you know Kirk Cousins, quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings, although he's injured now, uh, he joined the Manning cast for the, for part of the Dolphins Titans game. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, During his time on the Manning cast, he showed off. He's got a, uh, a blinged out chain that says Cole's cash on it. The backstory is, Coles gave this to him after it uh, became a joke online. The the original tweet was, you just know this dude is rolling in Coles cash. Because of the way he dresses. Because of, yeah, how he looks. Uh, And so now Coles is embracing it. He is embracing it. He's been showing off the chain on Twitter as well. Uh, X, I guess. Uh, My first question, is that an insult to say that he's rolling in Coles cash? I don't think it's an insult. It would be to certain people. Yeah. But to Kirk Cousins, I don't think it is. He wouldn't. Yeah, he clearly, he's embracing it. He's not taking it as an insult at all. Yeah, that's what I think. I think for him, he's reached the point where he knows that he's not cool. Yeah. And he's become a meme many a times because of his awkwardness style. Yeah. His awkward style. It's kind of kind of cringy. But now he's making money chuggy. off of it. Yeah, he's making money off of it. He's making Colts cash. Heck yeah, he is. Would you be insulted if somebody said that about you? I would not, but I did. I will tell you this much. I did not like Coles as a child. Why not? We, I felt like we used to go to Coles every Sunday. Uh-huh. My mom we used to go there all the time, and I just hated that place. I hated walking in there, the smell. They never had anything I wanted. Yeah. And I felt like we were in there forever. I was not a fan of Coles. That was probably one of my most hated stores wow. on the Sunday shopping trips my what, mom would do. What other, what, now I have to know what else is on your... Hated stores list. The top one was Kohl's. Uh-huh. I like Target because of Target. Target was great, yeah. The good thing about Target as a child, you can get a slushy. Yeah. Plus, big bonus. Sam's Club. I like Sam's Club Wait, what, because you can get a slushy. Why is the uh, food court that's at Target, especially when I was growing up, before it was like a Starbucks and a Pizza Hut, it was like that thing with the neon lights and the popcorn. Mm-hmm. I forget what it was called. Swizzle sticks or something like that. I don't know. But... uh that that was much more tempting than anything at Walmart. The Walmarts that have the Subways and the Auntie Anne's and the McDonald's inside. Ooh. Not as tempting as the Target food court. The Auntie Anne's is right there. If we went to the mall, which we didn't usually do mall. Yeah. Usually we were going to stores. But if we went to mall, my mom was all about the Auntie Anne's. We could always yeah. get a pretzel. Was... Mainly because she wanted one. <laughs> <laughs> she would get some cinnamon sticks and we would roll. But uh, Kohl's, yet again, had nothing for me there. That, no food court in Kohl's. Nothing good in there. They, were, they didn't even really have toys. And yet again, my parents had a toy store. I wasn't getting toys from Kohl's. Yeah. I already had toys. I wanted a snack. And at uh, Kohl's, they didn't have that. Here's what I remember from growing up is that Kohl's, all the girls loved Kohl's. That was like one of their favorite places, the gals I knew. Because the deals. The deals. Yeah, the deals. They could get cute stuff. They loved Coles. That's how TJ Maxx is now, man. Yeah. TJ Maxx, people go, go nuts crazy for, that place. for TJ Maxx. Um, but I, now I, maybe this is, maybe I'm like Kirk Cousins. I kind of don't mind Coles. I think they got some good, I think now I think they got some good deals. Dakota says Little Caesars and Kmart was the best. 
I don't remember. We didn't do a lot of shopping at Kmart. Mm, not a big I think Kmart even when fan. I was growing up, Kmart was going out of style. I'm telling you, if there was food in any store, yeah. as a child, you loved it. If you were allowed to get it. It was a tease if you couldn't. Yeah. If I went to Target and I didn't get a slushie, now I hate Target. Yeah, because when I was a kid, the mall was the best place to go shopping because every time we were getting some food. Every single time. Oh, yeah. You're stopping. And I think for sure, if, I, if I'm a parent... And you walk into Target, and you can keep your kid quiet the whole time with a $1 slushie. Yeah. It is worth it 10 times out of 10. Uh, I think I'm with you on that. <laughs> Find more Riot content online. Riot.RadioU.com.